everyone, Sage here, and welcome back to another episode of How to Animate the Gacha Scene Live 2D Tutorial Series, where I show you my process on rigging models and making animations. In this episode, we'll continue from where we left off from the first app and do head angles and body rigging. If you hadn't watched the last episode, I recommend checking out that part first before moving on to the stage, because you might get confused along the way, unless you're familiar enough with the program and its tools. I'll leave a link to the first episode of the series in the description below, as well as the eye icon on the top right of this video. With that out of the way, let's dive right into it! Okay, so we'll start with the head angles now. When it comes to estimating the angles and ratios of each part, it's important to have a reference of the angles. Though some of you are probably not going to use a reference, and that's completely okay. You could always just eyeball the parts and adjust your way around. I like to keep things as accurate as I can, so we'll be rigging each part of the head individually. Starting off with the head base. Turn off the visibility of the parts you won't use for now. For this model, we'll be using the main base and the left and right ears. Though, we won't use both ears since we'll be duplicating this when it's done. So go ahead and delete one of those ear parts. We hadn't added deformers for these yet, so let's create a warp deformer for each one. Select the head part, then the Create Warp Deformer button. Rigging time! Select the deformer for that, head over to the parameter palette, and click on the angle X parameter. Add three keyforms and start adjusting according to the shape of the reference. Since this is the base, it doesn't need to be exactly accurate since some of the parts will be covered by the hair, so just follow along the edges. Once you like the way it's looking, head over to the palette menu, then select Reflect Motion. This will automatically reflect the movement of one side to the other. Since we're rigging the X angle, make sure that Reflect Horizontally is checked, then click on OK. Now do the same thing for the left or right ear. On rigging the other side, I know it looks weird because the ear is literally right in front, but we'll be fixing that after we get the shape or form we want with the deformer. Once that's done, we're going to select the actual art mesh of the ear, then add three keyforms to the angle X parameter. Slide the red dot to the part where the ear should be behind, then on the inspector palette, decrease the draw order number. Just a number lower from the default one would do the trick. We're done with the main rigging of the ear, so it's time to duplicate it to the other side. Select all of the parts of the ear, including the deformer, then copy and paste it. We're going to right-click, then reflect. Again, since we're doing the X angle, make sure that the reflect horizontally and the angle X boxes are checked. Now for the angle Y. Switch from the part palette to the deformer palette so you can see the deformer hierarchy. Select head base deformer and the deformers of the ears, then create a warp deformer and name it angle Y. And with the deformer selected, add three keyforms to the angle Y parameter, then just adjust things from there. Whenever you select a part, deformer, or a group of those, you can put up a temporary deformer for them by clicking on the red deformer box on the lower right of the selected parts. Angle Y is not shown in the three forward facing reference, so it's best if you just eyeball it. And you're done with the main base of the head. Now for the nose. This would usually depend on stylistic choice, and this is how I personally do it with my models. I just make a deformer for both the bridge and the highlight, and add the three keyforms to both angle X and angle Y. Then go to the palette menu and select Synthesize Corners. Now for the eyes, we're gonna make use of the deformers that we made in episode 1. Referring to the deformer hierarchy in the deformer palette, select both of the deformers for the left and right eye, then key them to the angle X parameter. 
Then, using the reference, adjust the eye shape using the warp deformers. Use a temporary deformer for more convenience. Once that's done, do the same thing to the other side because reflecting it doesn't really work. Now for the angle Y. Select the whole deformer of the left and right eye deformers and key that to the angle Y parameter. Then adjust from there. Now for the hair. You're free to move the individual deformers of the hair for more accuracy, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just be using one whole deformer for each hair part. So select the whole deformer of the bangs, add three keyforms on both the angle X and angle Y parameters, then adjust it according to the reference. Once we're done, since we use the same deformer for the X and Y angles, we're going to synthesize the corners. From here, you can see that the main forms of the corners are there, but clearly still need more adjusting. So we'll have to do that manually. This part is pretty tedious, but you'll eventually get the hang of it. Now do the same thing for the rest of the hair parts, the rear and the back hair. Okay, the X and Y angles are done. And now it's time for the angle Z. To do that, head over to the deformer palette and select all of the main deformers of each part. Hair, eyes, mouth, etc. Then this time, we're going to add a rotation deformer. Now you have a rotation deformer for the head, but it's not set in the right position. All you gotta do is hold down Ctrl or Command, then click and drag the deformer to the position where you want it to be. After that, with the rotation deformer selected, Add three keyforms to the angle Z parameter and adjust from there. You're halfway done with rigging your model. Let's move on to the body rigging. Let's do the arm rigging first. Head over to the part palette and delete one of the parts, either left or right, since we'll be duplicating this later. Let's create a rotation deformer for the shoulder first. Select the shoulder, forearm, and hands by holding down shift or control slash command if you're selecting them individually. Then create a rotation deformer. Hold down Ctrl or Command and drag the deformer to adjust its placement. If everything looks good to you, you can go ahead and select the rotation deformer, head over to the parameter palette, and select what parameter you want it to be registered in. Add three keyforms on the parameter and start adjusting from there. Now for the forearm. Select it along with the hand parts of the model by going to the part palette and selecting them while holding down Shift or Ctrl or Command. After that, create a rotation deformer, hold down Ctrl or Command, and drag the deformer to the right placement. Then add three keyforms to its designated parameter, then adjust from there. I usually set the forearm parameter into endless so it's seamless whenever I animate that part. In order to do so, select the parameter, right click, then edit parameter. This time, let's rig the hand movements. Bear with me with this one since this will be a bit tedious. Since this model has multiple hands, we're going to add a deformer for each one for the switching. So, make a deformer for each hand first. Take note of the number of hands your model has. Then, right-click that specific parameter, then edit parameter. Then, change the value of the parameter according to the number of hands your model has with one being the first hand part. Let's rig the switching of hands one at a time. Select the deformer of the first hand, then this time, instead of adding three keyforms, double-click the parameter instead. Since this is the first hand, the value will be set to one, 
and 1.99 for a seamless transition and switching. Then click OK when you're done. Now for the second hand, select the former of that part, then double click the parameter again. This time, the values will be 2 and 2.99. The third hand will be 3 and 3.99 and so on and so forth. You're gonna have to repeat the process for the other hand parts. See what I mean about being tedious? <laughs> I'm gonna speed up this part so we can quickly move on to another person. I mean part! I was about to say part. Okay, one last thing before we duplicate this. We're going to set the draw order. Starting with the shoulder, select the shoulder part. Then select the designated parameter for that. Then add two keyforms. Slide the red dot to the other end. And then in the inspector palette, change the number of the draw order setting. We'll do the same thing with the forearm. Everything is now set for the whole arm. So now it's time to duplicate. Select the folder of the arm, then using the keyboard shortcuts, copy and paste it. When pasted, don't deselect the parts. Right click on them and select the option Reflect. Make sure that the Reflect horizontally box is checked as well as the parameters for some of the movements. Then click on OK. After that, don't deselect yet. You still have to change the parameters for these. So select the parameters one by one, hover over the drop down arrow, click Change, Choose the parameter you want the movements to be keyed in, then click OK. Then just repeat it with the same process for the rest of the arm parts. You're done with the arms! This is the same process for the legs. So go ahead and do the same thing. Alright, and here's how the model is looking so far. Congrats on making it this far of the series! I know there's a lot of information, but you're almost done with the whole thing. On the next episode, we'll continue on with the body angles and physics settings, as well as discussing about other tips I can give out to you to ease your rigging process. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching, stay amazing, and God bless. Siege out. Woo!